everyone, this is Sandy. Welcome to my channel. This is my uh, tutorial for this envelope flip album that I designed for country craft creation using Simple Stories, uh, Simply Vintage Love Story Collection. Stay tuned for the tutorial. I have a separate walkthrough video if you want to see the inside of it in detail. This envelope flip album I'll be using simple stories vintage love story um, I'm envisioning with the envelopes like a place where you can store pictures and Valentine cards or cards you make for Valentine's with this beautiful uh, love story paper so I have one sheet of each of the pattern papers to start this off with for sure to make the pages you're going to need six sheets I'm going to use the three solid colors and the um, three of the patterns for my envelopes then you need the uh, pattern paper to uh, cover your album cover I'll determine that as I'm working on that also you're going to need uh, two sheets of 12 by 12 lightweight chipboard which I've already cut mine and you're going to need four sheets of the artisan cardstock and I'm using the black so I've already cut mine so you need four 12 by 12 sheets of that to get started on this project. And the first thing you're going to do when you pick out your pattern paper, we're gonna cut this off, this branding strip, to make them all a 12 by 12 size. So you wanna do that on all of them before we get started later on on the envelope and then we'll make the album cover first. To make our cover, you need the lightweight chipboard and I've already cut my pieces. You need two that are seven by nine one that is four and a quarter by nine and two that are one by nine and then for your cardstock to wrap you're going to need two that are nine by eleven one that is six and a quarter by eleven two that are four by eleven and so i'll put these measurements down below in my description so you can copy and paste those if you want and so let's get started on making the cover of our album. Okay, so to wrap the cover, you're gonna to need to use whatever adhesive you like to use. I'm using art glitter glue. And I like to use the spacers that you can get from Country Craft Creations. This comes as a set. This is the one inch, and this is the one inch with one and a half. And I'll show you using this one later. And I just lay it on my card stock. And you can put it in your uh, scoreboard if you wanted to use it to keep keep it straight but I just took it and I glued this this one down on this side you can use score tape sheets score tape or glue and I use the art glitter glue and then I burnish it down really good so it is stuck to this then I take my bone folder and right up against the chipboard especially this um, lightweight chipboard and get me a groove started on that cardstock there and then the other end okay and then start folding it up and folding it over so it just makes it a little easier to fold right up against that thinner chipboard you can also like stand it up if you wanted to like that and get a good fold okay the next you're gonna miter, either cut out the corners or miter the corners. I do the straight angle miter about a 16th of an inch from the tip of that cardstock. No less than 16th of an inch, but at least a 16th of an inch. Okay, then I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna put a line of glue right along the edge of the chipboard, put the glue down on the cardstock. And then on the flap, fold it over and burnish. Once it's down, I like to stand it up and kind of do the edge just a little bit. Do the opposite side now.
burnish good. Let that glue grab down. And the edge. Now then, before you fold these others over, if you fold it down without, sometimes you, without pushing this other in, you might have some sticking out. So I like to go with my bone folder and at the very end, burnish down what is left from this side that sticks over. If you cut it at about a sixteenth of an inch, you shouldn't have much. Just make sure it does that. And then I double check to see that everything is going to fold at that corner. And I don't have any of the card, uh, chipboard showing. So let me do the same thing, glue along the edge of the chipboard, right in that fold. Fold it over in a good burnish. Okay, like that. And then the last one. Next, we're going to do the spines. So fold this over, get it burnished. Okay, so that's the cover. I'm gonna do the other one off camera and then I'll be back to show you doing for the spines next. Okay, so we have both wrapped. This one looks a little different because I messed up on one side and had to re-wrap. Re <laughs> so uh, this is the unfinished side, but that's, that's okay. I don't want you to get confused. So I'm gonna put a big X on my unfinished side. So these are the two finished sides of the covers. So we're gonna do the spine next. So we take the chipboard for the spine that's your one inch wide by nine. And these are your uh, four inch by 11. So we'll do one at a time. This time I use the spacer that has the one and a half. So I'm gonna line these up with my grid and put this right along the edge and the top so that when I glue this down, I will have one and a half inch on each side and a one inch top and bottom. So make sure this stays pretty straight and we'll go ahead and get the glue on the back side or your score tape if that's what you want to use. I just use glue because it's quicker. If you don't use a lot of glue that works okay. Um, if you get too much thickness of glue it could warp, you could see lines, but I try to use a light, lighter hand of glue it over and burnish it like that. Do the other side the same way. And then I'm just going to show you wrapping one piece on camera and then I'll do the other one on off camera and hopefully I won't mess that one up. <laughs> so glue. Okay, so as you can see, we have one inch at the bottom, one inch at the top, one and a half on each side. So I'm going to set this on the side and use the other one to show you how to wrap it. Okay, so same thing, we're going to take the bone folder and along the chipboard, kind of get me a line started. Okay, other side. Go ahead and fold it over. Get a good fold. 
right along that chipboard and especially the ends. Okay, now the only one that we're going to glue down are the ones on the end. So I go ahead and take my glue, glue along the edge here, glue along the flap. A little bit of glue along the edge here on the side. Now I'm gonna fold that over, burnish it really well, really push in up against that chipboard, get a groove, flatten this out, kind of make it become one with the chipboard. So you see it's got that nice groove right here and here. Same on the other end. Now then, I'm gonna turn this over with the finished side up. I'm gonna run this bone folder right along where the chipboard edge is. Start working me a groove here. I'm even going to fold it backwards on itself. Burnish that. Because that's where the cover is going to be bending at the spine. So you want that to be flexible. Do highly recommend that you use artisan cardstock for this because others might crack and split. You don't want that happening with your spine. So it should look like that. You've got the definition there. You can definitely see it. And then here from the chipboard edge, I'm gonna put my scissors right up against the chipboard and very slightly miter this top edge just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Very small on both ends. Okay, so that one is ready and I'll go ahead and do the other one and then I will be back. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put one spine on the two covers. So you take your spine, you've got the finished side facing up where your fold goes. I'm gonna fold this one on the right under. I'm gonna pick up one of my covers and I'm going to place the back side onto this flap. So what I'm going to do is take glue and I'm gonna put a line of glue about a 16th or an eighth of an inch, probably more like an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fold. And I'm going to put glue on the rest of the flap if you want to use score tape, you can. Just make sure you don't put it all the way up to the fold, okay? Because you'll have uh, adhesive showing in your uh, spine section there. You don't want that. Put the glue on. And then I'm just going to take the unfinished side, and I'm going to line it up along the fold of that flap of the spine piece. And I'm going to line them up. I know it's kind of hard for you to see in the camera probably that I, how I'm doing it, but I'm lining these up flush right here. I'm gonna really work that glue with my fingers. Open it up, burnish it here. Flip it over, give it a good burnish on this inner side. We don't want it to uh, come loose. Okay, right here. Got it burnished. Okay, so we have that one on. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're going to take on the fold. You've got your chipboard here, your one inch chipboard. We'll fold it down. We're gonna put glue about a 16th of an inch straight across, as straight as you can. I'm kind of wavy there. Then the glue on the rest of it pretty good amount of glue, make sure that it stays. Since I'm using the fine tip, I'm going over it quite a bit. I'm just kind of dragging it through, get it on there. 
Make sure on the end here. Right along the edge. Okay. So take the back side, and this one's the one with the X because I messed up, but I take the back side and line it up with that fold of that hinge. Make sure they're flush there. End to end like that. Burnish it. Open it up. Wipe off any glue in here. Give it a good burnish. This is the inside of the album now that you see. Flip it over and get it on the outside as well. Okay, so that's the covers with the one spine. And the other spine is going to go on this side here. And then it'll attach to the flap. We'll need to make the flap. So let's go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Fold this to the raw side. So on the finished edge of the hinge. Okay, the glue, 16th of an inch from the edge. Glue all over the hinge part. Got a good amount of glue on here. Now then, the unfinished edge of the album cover goes onto the finished side of the spine. Burnish that, I know that looks ugly, but that's okay. Like I said, it's gonna be covered by pattern paper, so there's no need to panic just yet. And this will be covered on the inside here as well. I'm just gonna burnish and make sure everything is stuck down good. Okay, so now we have this that's going to come over and that's where that flap is going to go okay got it right now let's get ready to do our flap and we'll do that next and attach it okay so to make our envelope shaped flap for our album cover we have this piece that was cut at um four and a quarter by nine i use four and a quarter <clears throat> you can make it a little wider but I wanted to use the leftover part of my chipboard. I didn't want to cut into a new sheet. So I took my ruler and a pen and I marked halfway. So the center point is four and a half on the nine inch side. So I have that mark here. I'm gonna take my trimmer. Now you could do this with your scissors from corner, from the tip of the corner right there to that point. But I wanna make sure it's as straight as I can do it. So cut off that triangle. You don't need that anymore. So you got that. And then from this corner, <coughs> excuse me, from this corner, again, to that point. So line them up and throw that one away. So now we have the flap that's going to be attached Hopefully we got the right length, yep. And it's gonna make this album have an envelope look to it. So now we need to wrap this with black cardstock. And I cut the piece at uh, six and a quarter by 11, because this is our 11 inch side here. So we want this whole piece here. So I'm just gonna put a spacer, line this up like this. Okay. Put my one inch spacer on. So that's gonna glue down right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the glue on the one side of our flap of the chipboard. So it makes the point go right into that corner. Flush right up there at the top. So that's where that's going to sit. Now, of course, we can't wrap 
with all this, so we're going to cut that away. So I'm going to fold this one up, and actually I should have used the uh, bone folder and got me a fold right there like that. And so this side, I'm just going to eyeball it, and I'm going to cut it about an inch. So I'm cutting off that triangle there. Like that. Not perfect, but it'll work. So now we're going to get a line here, a line here. Pull that up. Okay, fold that up. Now we need to miter. So on these points, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, trying to think what's the best way. I think for these, we're just going to cut out the area that was made by the folds like that. I think that's going to be easier on this type of fold over. So this is kind of like, instead of cutting out corners, you cut out triangles, sort of. Okay, so now we have that cut out. Let's see how that folds over. Folds this one over. So this is gonna work pretty good here. I'm gonna just make sure and clean this up a little bit. That point like that, that's gonna fold like that. Okay, so we bring this up and then these are gonna to have to be cut off a little bit at the top, just on the short ones here, kind of like that. Okay, so let's put that side down first, those two sides with our glue into the fold of the cardstock right up against the edge. Glue on the flap. Bring that over. Finish that down. Other side. point looks that looks pretty good burnish the edges here okay so this right here is going to be kind of like on those corners I'm going to make sure that it's kind of burnished down in there and we're gonna to have to do some cutting here mitering so I'm gonna do an angle like this fold it over even more do your angle so that when it folds over, and I need to make sure that one's cleaned off. That one didn't get cleaned off very good. There we go. Okay. We have enough angle that it's not gonna show sticking out. So put it up against the chipboard and cut at an angle. Okay. So I have a little bit showing here on the back side, and I can cut that off get that point and now we put the glue in and on our flat burnish it in. So of course this unfinished side will be covered with patterned paper for our album. Okay, so we've got that. Make sure the edge is burnished here and that looks pretty good. So now we're ready to attach this to the album. Onto this. 
So this time I make it right. I'm gonna open this up. Fold my flap in towards the unfinished. Double check. Put this unfinished side onto right like that. Okay, so now then, I'm gonna put my glue, let me double check here. We're gonna have to cut our flap. I mean our hinge part. So I'm gonna lay this on here, take a pencil, lay this where it's gonna go and I'm gonna draw a line right here and right here just on that hinge flap right there and where the pencil mark is i'm just going to trim that off okay and this one also okay so make sure you put your scissors up against that chipboard there so you're not cutting away any of the chipboard you don't want to cut the chipboard away and then that should fit in there like that okay so now we can put our glue quarter of an inch or not quarter of an inch sorry eighth of an inch from the edge of the fold and then on the whole flap where you can see it i know it's hard with the black to see right along that angle there put a, quite a bit of glue on there make sure it stays okay so unfinished side goes right along there and there make sure it lines up along the fold Okay, pressing it down and then opening it up and burnishing it. Now, if I have a little bit of hangover, like right there with my scissors, I will just trim that off. But it looks pretty good. Okay. Did I say I had some hanging off? All right. Looks like right there. There we go. All right, so that is the closure of our album. Like that to make it look like an envelope. Can you see it there in the black? You'll be able to see it more. And we'll use a magnet closure on that. Make sure this is lined up right. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right, so next we're gonna put a magnet on and then we'll uh, get my pattern papers cut and we'll get that all ready to go. Okay, so I am going to mat mine with the 65 pound white artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations. I've already done some of them. Uh, the measurements are for your front and back cover, cut two of the white that are nine wide by six and seven eighths. Check that measurement. Mine. My wrapping might have been off a little bit, so it's either eight and seven eighths or nine inches wide. Just double check it. And then of the pattern paper, I cut two that are eight and seven eighths wide for mine by six and three quarters tall. It's all going to depend on how you want your matting, how much margin you want to show. For the spine, I cut, um, let's see, spine, I cut two that are nine wide by seven eighths tall of the white and eight and seven eighths wide by three quarters tall of the pattern paper. And then for this piece here, I cut one out of white that was eight and three quarters wide by four tall and then one a pattern paper eight and a quarter wide by uh, five and seven eighths tall. And what I did is I laid this on there and traced around uh, after laying my paper where I thought it would need to be and then just cut it out. So you cut it to fit. So that's gonna go right there. Now, 
I will cut another one the same way for inside, but for now I'm just doing the outside. I do want to put magnets on, and I want to put magnets on here before I add my patterned paper so that the magnet is only going through one thickness of paper. I want to make sure that it's, it sticks good. So I have the large basic gray from Country Craft Creations. It's where you can order them, and I peel the backing off. And I'm going to put it down kind of in the center of the point about right there and I don't have any scotch tape so I'm going to use some of this um, dye tape I think that should work I kind of cut it too big to hold that down until I get my pattern paper on so I think in, that's another use for this tape that I got in my design team package. I'm gonna attach this magnet now. Let's make sure we're lining everything up right as perfect as we can here. Separate it and then I'll put tape on this as well. And then I'm ready to put my patterned paper on. Okay, so there we have that. And then this is going to go right here. So just go ahead and glue that on real quick. I changed my tip to the larger tip to get a little more glue coming out on this bottle with the art glitter glue. Just have to be careful and not squeeze as much. So the glue comes out a lot easier with the bigger tip. It's type of dispenser it comes with two tips are really fine and the uh, other now I'm looking to make sure my butterfly is in the right direction there he is so I'm just going to center this up the best I can come down a little more there we go okay we burnish that you can flatten down to burnish it if you need to Make sure it goes around the magnet really well. And so that's what that looks like, like that, our album cover. We need to put that piece on and then we'll do the inside as well. So let me grab this piece here and we're going to put that on. So let me open this up this way. It makes it a little bit easier to line things up. And if you haven't tried the 65 pound artisan cardstock for matting yet, you really should check it out. It helps to not add as much thickness to your matting. Great for photos. And I believe it is available in black and possibly will be coming out in other colors soon. So that'll be great. So we line this up. Okay, and burnish. So, I'm not sure yet, but I'm thinking I might put that shaker right here on the front. When it's all said and done, of course, right now it's kind of floppy because we don't have anything inside of it. But the back side, I use this print up here. I love the birds and I started to put them on the front, but they would have been covered up and there'd only been half a bird. So I think it looks a whole lot better like this. And so this is like the back of the envelope and this is the front. So one of those stamp things I may cut out when I'm decorating like from some of the other paper or maybe there's a sticker or chipboard to cut out a stamp. I think that would be really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pattern the inside. The measurements will be the same. You just measure for you what you want to do. I am gonna go ahead and double mat all this with the white. I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll be back. We'll start on the pages next, which will be envelope pages. So stay tuned. Okay, so as I was starting to work on the inside, I totally realized I haven't had you put your support pieces in. No wonder it was a little floppy. 
So I didn't get one here, but that's okay because I would have had to cut it at an angle, but I am gonna put a support piece right here over this one to give it more stability. And then one over this spine section. So you need one piece that is five by nine, just under nine, and one piece that is two inches, just under nine in height. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Now I don't have score tape sheets down here with me. So I am going to put score tape on the edge here. And this one, probably a couple in the middle. Uh, I like to use solid score tape sheets because it keeps it from bubbling, but if I burnish it really well, I don't think we'll have a problem with it. So let's go ahead and get this one ready. And this wider one too. strips and then I also will use glue with this oops I'm out of score tape now so we'll use glue on the rest of it okay let's burnish that down so the backing will pull off better and then we'll go ahead and add these on so let's do this one first let me take the backings off and like I said, I will also use glue. Glad I noticed that before I put all my pattern paper on. I was like, oh, there's, there's uh, areas that aren't covered with paper. And then I realized, oh, I didn't add the support pieces. So I don't think I even gave you the measurements for those earlier. So yeah. Sorry about that, but everything will turn out just fine. So we put glue here and on the ends. So this one, I'm going to cover it where this fold is right here, just slightly off the edge here, from the top and the bottom, like that. Okay, and burnish that down. And then we're going to let it dry before I uh, start folding it because we want to make sure that everything is attached really well. And I'm going to like slightly lift so that I can burnish in that groove there. Right there. So we want to get that in while it's still pliable with the glue and the score tape. So that's gonna make it firm up a lot right there. Okay, so we burnish that, and let that dry, and then let's go ahead and put this other side on. Then a several, several weeks since I've been able to craft, so I guess my brain has forgotten some steps that I just normally take for granted. So here we go. Glue in between. There. A little bit on this end. Okay. And then we're gonna fit that so that the edges come off of where these two flaps are. Because we don't want them stacked right on top of each other. We wanna kinda um, give it some breathing room. Our, leveling out we don't want it too thick if it was stacked on each other it could become too thick so i'm just going to kind of 
kind of burnish that in right quick. And then this one. Okay, now that's gonna stabilize this a whole lot better than it was. <laughs> So let's let this dry really well, and then we'll come back. And here I did cut the same way, uh, cut this piece out the same size as before. The white mat is cut at, um, for the flap, eight and three quarters by four, and then I laid it on there and cut it out. And I moved the magnet so that it would be on top of the white so that there's only one thickness of pattern paper once I uh, get that get that on there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the white mats for this. I've got this one already cut for these and uh, I've got need one more cut and we will get that in there and decide I'll decide on what pattern paper I want to use. Okay so I have the cover of the album made so that did pattern all of it had the magnets here so because I want it to look like an envelope I ran my pattern this way on the back, and then I couldn't decide on the inside whether to do it this way, so I did do the same here with the typewriter keys going like this, though my pages, so that's gonna be something you need to decide which way you want your pattern paper to go. So the next thing we're going to do is make the envelopes for our pages. Now, I am making mine out of three patterns. Make sure you trim off the branding strip. I've already done five of them. I've used three patterns and three of the solids. My first one here, I messed up and so I had to rescore it to make it the size I wanted. So the finish, so it doesn't look that pretty, but I'm gonna be covering with some pattern paper, so I'm okay with that. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a white one and then on one of the patterned ones to make the envelopes. These ended up being finished size six and three quarters tall by eight and a half wide to go in the book. So this, this will make our pages. So um, if you want to not use pattern paper, you could just do it out of cardstock. This is the 65 pound artisan cardstock. You want the lighter cardstock versus your heavier weight to make an envelope. So the way I do it is I take my grid and I lay this on here right along the edge of a grid. And the first thing I do is I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. I put a little tiny pencil dot at the six. I lay my ruler down to measure six and I put a dot, make sure it's lined up right, at the six, right there. So I have a little pencil dot, okay? This is how to make an envelope a large envelope without using a punch board. Take this bottom corner and the very tip of it, I'm gonna place on that dot. Hold it there, press in the, make sure it stays where it belongs. <laughs> press in the middle here, to get a crease, and then go ahead and with your bone folder, burnish that out. Now when I measure from the tip out to the edge, that's four and a quarter, so that's what I want. I'm going to turn it and do this corner the same way. It's right to that dot. Press it down in the center to get my start. Burnish it out to get my crease. I'd like to double check and make sure. Four and a quarter. So that's those pieces on the side. Now, to make this work for the size I need, and this is where I messed up on that one, I'm just going to measure here from the edge, put a little pencil mark very lightly at one inch from the edge of this corner to right there. Now I wanna make sure that it's straight. So I'm gonna lay my ruler there and I'm going to, let's see here. I'm just gonna put a mark here. This is to double check. From that mark out is supposed to be 
about five inches, I believe. Let me check my notes here. Five inches. So I need to move this down. So it's not going to be quite an inch. Let's make it seven eighths. Seven eighths. And do that instead. Seven eighths. And seven eighths. So that's gonna bring that line in. And I like to line it up on my grid to make sure I'm getting everything straight. So that line there to that line. So that brings it in and that should be closer, yeah, to five inches. So the way I normally do this is I lay this out here, line these corners with my grid on that solid line. I'm gonna place my ruler where it needs to be, just in, so this is, see, there's the inch. So I want it to come in just a little bit. Make sure it's straight across. Then I grab the tip down here, holding the ruler really tight, and fold this up and over and then take the ruler out and go ahead and get my crease in there. Then I'm gonna check from the tip over is five inches. Okay, so that's good. Just like that. Then the other side, we're gonna do the same way. I'm gonna line it up on the grid here and here and at about just under an inch, like seven eighths of an inch. Make sure it's straight. I'm just looking at everything. Okay, it's from this point here, right there, just below that solid there. And then I'm gonna bring it up, fold it, press it, burnish it down. Check my, from the tip over is five inches. So now when I measure this, I have, it's supposed to be six and three quarters. It's a little bit bigger. So I should have stayed with that inch. There's my eight and a half. This is why I keep having to redo these some. I'm gonna just kind of roll it a little bit. I want it to be just a little more narrow. I don't want it quite as big. And this is why I know I'm going to cover this with paper, decorative paper. So like, like I said, if you want to use just a cardstock, you can. So there we have the six and three quarters. Then open it back up. And when we have the new score line, I'm going to cut out this little notch here. That's to take away some bulk from the envelope. So right along the score lines, just up to that score line there. So you're just cutting out a little triangle from your envelope. That one needs to be a little straighter. Do it from this side. I don't have my smaller scissors here, so it's a little trickier with these big ones. Okay, and then cut this other one out here, right up. And the last one. Now, if you forget to do this part, it's not gonna affect anything that much but I just kind of like to cut it out just to eliminate some of the bulk, but it's not, not a huge issue. So then the wider flaps, 
I'm going to take my punch and I'm using the 10 millimeter. You do whatever size you want. The two large flaps around the corners. Well, I try to. There we go. And then bring this up. So I'm gonna make this one the bottom though, where I have the extra crease so I can brush it out. And this one needs a little more trimmed. So you bring this over, the small flaps go down. I'm gonna take my fine tip glue and I'm gonna put glue on this side right here. And then about just a couple of inches from the end because this will extend from that rounded end. You don't wanna go all the way down. So just a line of glue. You could use score tape if you wanted to. And we're gonna fold that up and seal it closed. Okay, so that is a page envelope. Of course, I won't be using this white one because I've got the colored ones ready, but I wanted to show you on white. I thought it might be a little easier to see how to make that. So then when you fold this down, and if you need to trim just a little bit more, if you didn't quite get it on that score line to make it fold shut better, you wanna do that. So actually when we make our pages, that flap's gonna be open. <laughs> so anyway, burnish it all down good, get it nice and flat, and that is an envelope for your page. So we have that size, so they're all about the same size if you get it folded right. So let's do one more with the printed one. Hopefully I will get that a little bit better. Like I said, make sure you trim off your um, branding strip and you wanna kind of look for as non-dimensional as you can. So like these, we have the hearts, they're gonna be sideways. It just, no matter what you do, I'm going to probably use this one on the outside. So we're going to put this facing up. So you, the one that's gonna be the inside should be facing up. Just gonna line it up with the grid. Take my pencil and mark six inches up. Two, three, four, five, six right here. So that's the halfway point. Take my ruler, make sure it's straight and go to six and put a dot right there. Take your bottom right corner, put the tip to the dot, press, burnish out. I can do this one really easy. <laughs> then the other one, turn it around opposite side, point to point, press down in the center and then burnish out. So now we have the side ones. So it's looking pretty good like that with that print. And then this is where we've got to try to do the, the measurements here. So I want this to be eight and a half when it's folded. Total. So I'm going to line this up, put these two corners on my grid. You probably could use one of your other envelopes to measure it. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to go ahead and bring this one at an inch. Fold it up. There. So I know that fold in there is probably making the measurement off a little bit. Burnish that down. Okay, so that one's about five and an eight, but that one's gonna work. I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm gonna turn this one around, line these up. And I know that when I fold this, I want it to be six and three quarters. So I'm gonna put me a mark here. From this end, and I gotta remember my ruler didn't start right on the end. So there we go. Six and three quarters. So about right here is where the fold should be. 
So that was not quite an inch. Fold that one up, press it down. And before I go ahead and really press it down, I'm gonna measure. Yeah, six and three quarters. Okay, so that did better. Yep, so there we go. There's that one, so opening it up. Cut out that score line right there and across. It's just a little triangle coming out. I know it's probably hard to see in the camera, but you're cutting out that where the score lines come to a point there. Right there and one more. So this is what would be a notch that you would punch out on your envelope punch board. But we're making a bigger one. So small ones come in and this goes like that. So remember to round the corners of your big flaps. And now after I get this assembled on my five envelopes, what I'm going to do is ink the edges to kind of make them look shabby, chic, I guess you would say. And um, go ahead, I'm gonna do that off camera. So ink up edges do any inking you want to I didn't do it on my cover I may go back do a little inking on that to kind of make a match burnish this really well make sure none of the glue gets underneath here you don't want to seal up your uh, envelope here but there's that one just go ahead and burnish it Get it nice and flat. So see how pretty the patterned envelopes look like that? So make sure everything is squared up. Okay, so now we're ready to, uh, I'm gonna ink it all off camera and then I'll be ready to show you how to put them together. I've inked all my envelopes and the album cover too. And so now I'm ready to put these in as pages. So I have arranged them how I want them and I hopefully can get them to come out this way. Um, I'll try to take this nice and slow because it can be kind of confusing how to put these together uh, so that we can, you know, <laughs> make them flip out the way I want. So, um, I'm gonna have three on this side, three on this side, nothing goes in the spine. So I'm just getting my glue ready to go. Hopefully it's not clogged, so we'll see here. Okay, so let's start on this side. So I do want this to be the front. I do want this to be the front of what shows. And so I'm gonna line it up like this. So double checking here. Okay, so this one, this one's going to be the bottom and it's gonna to attach to the right. Now you can either leave it, attach this whole flap here or we can cut this off. Um, I'm gonna decide on that later. Next, I'm gonna take this one. So the flap of this one, this is gonna go inside here. The flap of this one is gonna to attach to the solid part of this first envelope, okay? Now you can glue the whole thing down. You're just gonna line them up best you can. Um, you can glue this whole flap down, 
or you can just glue right here and kind of leave a tuck spot, which I think I'm gonna like do the bottom half. So I'm gonna put glue right here along the edge and just from this tip over to attach it down, okay? So I put all my glue like that and then I'm going to line these up and bring this flap over. So I'm still free. This one like this and attach it to the envelope on the front. So now we have that. Now this one, the flap of this one, we're gonna open this up. But this one's going to attach to the next one here. Hopefully this will open up the way I want it to. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna lay this one over like this. Open this one up. So you flip it up, you got the second envelope there. I know it's confusing. Lay this one over it, flip this over, and this is going to glue here. I'm gonna do the same thing. So this one's on the left here, so it goes right across, down, and across the bottom. Put this right there, okay. So now, when this one glues in, we've got this flap open. Make sure glue's cleaned out. And this one flips this way. Okay. Now then, that's gonna be kinda loose there. I don't know if I like that. So you know what? I'm not gonna make those pockets. I want it to glue completely down. It's just gonna be less problems if we do that, so I apologize for that. It was just an idea. Okay, so let's get that one down, and then we put glue underneath this one as two. I can still pull up and get that glue right there. Glue all that down. And that one, did I glue this one? I'm gonna glue this one down too. I just don't want to flip it open. So we'll have to make our own pockets out of other pieces of paper. So this like here, this will flip to this way or it will flip up this way and this one will flip out. Okay, so now I think I am gonna go ahead and cut this one down. Put it at about the inch mark here with that little with the envelope notch starts. So let me get it under here, right there, right there. I'm just gonna slice that off. That's gonna make I'm gonna save that. That's gonna make a hinge. So the glue is just gonna go on this hinge part on the back side. For me, it's the butterflies. Okay. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna place it as far as I can over here, kind of center it on the left side of my album right there wipe off any glue and burnish it down so now that page is in page sets in so we have it opening this way bring it up and this away now there's other ways to put these together and i'm going to see if i can figure it out on this side and make it a little bit different but pretty much that's how that one goes in so let's play with this one a little bit different and see how what we can make make with it so Instead of that way, I think I'm going to do it like this. Okay, 
So we lay them out like that, and then we can fold them different, I'm thinking. Okay, so second one on the center, put your glue on the entire thing. Lay in frame, I hope so, on the whole flap. And my glue is starting to clog up some. Way down inside there. Just enough glue to attach to this one. That right along the fold line of the envelope. So there it is on that side that way. Flip it over. And then this one's going to go on this one. So I'm gonna grab my other glue bottle because that one's clogged up. And the front of this one goes into this one here. Right along that fold line. like that. Now then this one I'm just going to put it this way like this. Folds in like that. So I'm going to cut this like I did the other one. And we'll see if this one folds different. <laughs> so put it right there and right there. Slice that off, gives us a hinge. And it's going to fit right there. Let's rip off a little bit, there we go. Now the reason you want to ink these is because some of this pattern paper, you'll start seeing a little, a little raggediness, which I'm fine with because that's the shabby chic part of it all. But you do want to ink it because it just makes it look better when you ink it. Okay, there we go. And then line this up as far as you can to the side. Kind of center it. And burnish down. Okay, so we have them in. So this right side the way I put it in is more like an accordion, so it comes out like that. So you could do both sides the same if you want. This one folds this way, and then folds this way, and then out. So it's just a different look. And now I'm ready to do some decorating. So what I'm gonna do is take some scraps, like I have, this was cut off of this other envelope. butterfly side <laughs> okay so I have this really pretty dot or I have the butterflies but I like the dot I haven't used the dot yet so I'm just going to take this this is where we cut it off to make our hinge and I'm just going to either glue it down or decide if I want that pocket like I was thinking about before because then I could stick a little tag in there so I think for now, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue the whole straight side down. And then just from like this point over and then the bottom. Make sure this up here is glued down. So that's this first page here. And that should just fit right in there. So that kind of continues that uh, envelope look on this side. And then 
I had these scraps. So this one measures um, three and a quarter by about six, six and three quarters almost. And I scored on one side, on the left side of what I want to show at a half inch and I rounded the corners. So this one I'm gonna pull up and I'm gonna attach this hinge to the back side. So we have like a little flap here. So I'll put my glue on the hinge, just on that half inch section. Lift this up and I'm gonna hang this over it and I'm just going to center it top to bottom pretty close. So that fold goes right up against the fold of that envelope there on the left side. And the way it's laying over like that, it'll lay down pretty flat. I can always add something, you know, like a paper clip or something if I want to. But I think that's gonna work pretty good. What I want, like that. So now I'm gonna keep decorating. Um, use any of your scraps that you want. Of course, I will come back on and show you how to do what I'm gonna do on the front here. Uh, so go ahead and add any kind of decorations that you want. Like if you have sections you want to cover with more solid different paper, well, you can do that. Just measure and cut whatever you want to put on your pages. is gonna be totally up to you. And so I'm gonna keep doing that off screen and I will come back and show you what I've done and then also show you the finishing of everything. So I have finished all the inside of my album here and I'll be showing you that in a separate walkthrough. So what I did was pattern all of my envelope pages and then I made inserts and added different decorative elements to it. Envelopes I made, I will give you the measurements probably later different sizes to fit in with my envelope punch board. So it's, you know, I use the 65 pound cardstock to make it a whole lot lightweight. It's just, I love making envelopes with that weight of paper. So like, here's all the different elements like this. So we'll just like fold it back up like that. So now I'm ready to work on this finishing of the outside. So what I want to show you on camera is the, um, using how to use the Physix shaker domes. So this is the pack that I got in my design team package and there's eight domes in the pack. I don't think I even shared that in the video because I probably didn't pay attention to it. So I have lots more extra to do, so I have taken one out. And as you can see, it comes with adhesive strip already on it. So I have filled this dome with some of the bits from this package. This was in my design team package. Uh, it's the Buttons Galore and More Just Married Sparklets, and I made sure not to use the bride and the groom in there because this isn't a wedding album that I'm working on. So I do have two of the doily looking hearts and all the little glittery sparkles in there. Now, normally with these, you're doing them on a base, like on a card, or you would cut out a circle with a punch or a die to fit the back of this little dome. But I wanted mine clear because I'm going to see through to the pattern paper that's on the cover. And I don't have a whole lot of the um, paper scraps left. So from packaging, I cut some clear. And that's what I'm going to lay over that. So I'm just going to take the backing off of my adhesive and I'm going to lay this over it nice and flat to capture all those little shaker bits in that dome. So I'm gonna run my finger around it, make sure it is stuck down. And then, so see there's the shaker bits in there. I'm gonna take my scissors and cut around the dome base, cutting my clear packaging away because it would be really difficult to put this onto the cover without these uh, little sparkly bits sealed in. So just go ahead and if it's not exactly perfect because it's clear, it's not really gonna show that much. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got all the little kind of edges clipped off of that packaging. 
Okay, so normally this would stick down, but I'm gonna use just a little bit of glue to stick it down. And then off camera, I'm going to add flowers from my stash. So my position is, I don't want it dead center here. I wanna be able to arrange some flowers here. So I'm gonna put it in up here at the top. I'm gonna to add my glue and let that dry. And then I will add my flowers. And I'll show you real quick some of the flowers. They're from my stash and they are from Country Craft Creations. Now this glue, it should work. I'm going to kind of like spread it out a little bit, uh, but it should dry clear on this, so I shouldn't have any problems that way, but I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of rub it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna flip this over right about in there. And of course, I'm gonna let that dry. So um, the next thing I will do is add the flowers. What I did is I had a pack from Country Craft Creations that I had purchased for other um, projects or personal projects. I just got off, add them to my stash. This is a 49 and Market Royal Spray. I'm gonna use one of the yellow ones from that. And then from Prima, I had pulled out some flowers. I don't have the package. I trimmed that down smaller and the flowers that came were bigger than what I wanted. So I just tore off from this base, this one and this one, took those off. <laughs> so I just want the smaller sections. These I will save because I can certainly add back if I want the larger size. Sometimes I want smaller than what comes with it. Uh, I did like the buds that came with that set of Prima flowers that I ordered. There we go. And then I had these little, pull these little pink ones with the pearls from this package of Prima that I got from Country Craft Creations. I think this was left over from another design team package. Um, these were indigo. So anyway, just check your stash for some flowers that goes with the paper collection you're using. Like I said, I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to arrange these around that. I also made me a bow out of the twine that I've been using. This is the nat natural button jute twine you can get from Country Craft Creations. So this is a bow I've made that I probably will use on this. And uh, yeah, I'll be finishing all this up and come back show you here at the end, and then I will do a more detailed walk through a separate video on that. Okay, so there it is all on the cover. You can even see the uh, art glitter glue did dry clear on that little dome. Added my flowers, the um, twine, the bow here, the jute string bow. Love these flowers with it. It looks like they almost were made for this paper collection. So it's very, very pretty. I like how it turned out. Of course, it opens up this away and I will show you more details in the separate walkthrough video. So this is the conclusion of the tutorial. I wanna thank you so much for following along. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you'll see what my next project will be. I'll have another tutorial in the next week or so. And as always, shop at countrycraftcreations.com for your paper collection supplies and other elements and basic uh, supplies like cardstock, art glitter glue, uh, the 65 pound cardstock that's great for matting and making envelopes and other basic essentials and a lots of wonderful uh, paper collections. So I'll check with you soon. Thanks for watching, bye-bye. Dry. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile? Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on.